here I have water, um, ink, brush, paper and um, I want to play with them with water and ink and uh, <clears throat> think about stages of child and human development and in the background uh, I want to play music it's a <clears throat> Sufi devotional uh, music uh, sung by Farid Ayaz who is a Hindustani musician and the song is about it's about life it's about trials and tribulations of life so if you think about life as a <clears throat> as a kind of a field field of time and space an ocean of time and space and we visualize we visualize an egg the egg is the largest cell in the human body and we'll visualize sperm and sperm is the smallest cell in the human body and the egg is um, dark and sperm is light actually it emits its own light so there is some kind of duality yin yang complementarity in that and one of the sperms penetrates the egg and so then the egg divides and there is um, some kind of predictability in this in utero development how the egg divides in two and then in four and then eight and uh, this stages of first trimester second trimester and child develops in utero this substance feels every little feeling that the mother feels this is something that we're just beginning to explore gene by gene human beings are affected by the environment as soon as they have an environment and that means as soon as we implant it in the womb i was thinking to myself just breathe just breathe just breathe fetuses of mothers who were high anxious showing differences almost we want to say in temperament we see reduced brain volume reduced gray matter density people are conceiving carrying and birthing children under increasingly stressed conditions my grandmother had undiagnosed depression which then contributed to my mother's stress level as well and how that got transmitted to me and how i was going to transmit that to the next generation when we see dysfunction in people we're actually seeing the imprint of that early experience an adult trauma is really a fetal trauma and this has been the missing piece the foundation for our whole life when you come to a point of knowing what is the cause of all this you have an answer like the door opens Included this trailer from a new documentary in utero that talks about how important is this development in utero and talks about epigenetics the importance of the environmental factors the importance of uh, hereditary streams on who we become and who we are and then the child is ready to be born and the archetypal gesture of birth is kind of diving in, <clears throat> diving in into this uh, space-time continuum. So here we have the head of the child, and the child is diving in. Now, of course, not every child dives in head first. Some children are born feet first, breached. Some people are born cesarean, and maybe it has some consequences of how we come into the world but the in general in general diving in and then what's what's the next stage well we can say the next stage is maybe the stage of crawling so here is a child crawling and um, there are different ways to think about stages so like 
European tradition, Shakespeare talks about seven stages of development. And uh, we can think about um, in ancient times, in ancient Greece, Oedipus. Oedipus. Oedipus became a king because Oedipus knew the answer to Sphinx riddle. Sphinx sieged the city of Thebes and asked every person who wanted to come in or out of the city this famous riddle of the Sphinx. And the riddle is, what creature crawls on four in the morning and walks on two midday and at dusk is on three? And so the Oedipus knew that this is a human being who human being crawls on four as an infant and then stands up and then at the end of life leans on a cane. <clears throat> so this stage of, in Shakespeare words, is an infant mewing and puking in the nurse's arms. And this progression of birth and crawling is progression towards walking, towards standing up. So typically, in general, at the end of the first year, the child stands up and walks. Now, of course, not every child stands up exactly at 12 months, but in general, in general, the gesture is from crawling to walking. Well, good. What if we uh, look at these first three years and see what are the gestures of the development in the first three years? So we can think, okay, there is this movement of coming in, this pulse. And at the end of the first year, the child stands up. There is this crawling stage here standing. And so what happens in this period between one and two years? Well, the child speaks. We all heard about this terrible twos. I'll, I'll make a mouth here to indicate sounds. Not only sounds, not only imitation of words, but sentences. sentences. So standing, speaking. And what happens at the end of the third year? Well, the child comes into realization of self, realization of being separate. Rudolf Steiner says, realization of I am. What if we now move further away and look at it at um, greater magnification, further away magnification. So we'll think about the seven years pulse or seven year cycle. So we'll think, okay, we have first seven years, 14, 21. And first seven years, here, seven years in European cultures traditionally that was the time to go to school so change of teeth and the child goes to school and in Shakespeare words this is uh, a schoolboy creeping like a snail unwillingly unwillingly to school so if this is seven and this is 14 what happens in 14 well, the child continues to grow, and so proportions change. The head is smaller, and what's typical about this period of life is puberty. puberty. So we have this coming into the world, first three years, and this, uh, this rhythm of three years continues, right? We are talking now about seven years written. But within the seven years written, there is the three-year the three written. 
and of course within the three year rhythm there is yearly you know yearly movement of the rhythm of the seasons and there is the daily rhythm so this is rhythms of breathing rhythms of continuing movement development breathing and so if this is uh, 7 14 what happens at 21 well, the child continues to grow and uh, proportions change the head is smaller yet and at this time typically typically proportions the head is 1 8 of the length of the body and the child is now just like the cycle of three the cycles are repeating themselves sort of reflecting themselves so here 21 uh, participant in the world uh, self-realization the participant active participant in the world What if we look, what if we move further yet and look at what happens after 21? So we can also think that there is a rhythm of 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, etc. And we can look at stories and learn from world cultures how how people thought about this movement because all the stages as general as we speak about them all the stages have different different goals different different challenges different trials and tribulations and accomplishments and so as we move as we move through this ocean of time and space we want to understand we want to understand our own biography we want to understand our own rhythm and how this rhythm reflects or um, moves with the stories of humanity the stories of uh, sages and teachers who went through these stages before us. So we'll look at how different cultures understood this process of human development and stages and to understand how in this process we have an active hand to understand how we can think about education and in particular as we become self-aware to think about self-cultivation. <laughs> 